Next, we'll talk about lake and pond ecosystems. Underwater plants and plankton make up most of the food base for entire pond and lake ecosystems. Plankton are tiny, mostly microscopic, free-floating organisms. There are two kinds of plankton. Phytoplankton are photosynthesizing aquatic organisms, yet they can grow in a lake's sunlit open water photic zone where rooted plants can't. They are producers that release oxygen into the water and serve as food for many kinds of aquatic animals, including the second main type of plankton. These are called zooplankton. These are tiny, free-floating animals. Plankton have a high nutritional content and make up most of the living stuff in a pond. Zooplankton eat phytoplankton, and many species eat each other. They can be barely visible, complex organisms, such as water fleas, or they can be small, such as single-celled protozoa. Many invertebrates and small fish eat plankton. Some mollusks, such as clams and mussels, and fish can even filter plankton from the water by using specialized mouth parts and adaptations to gills. Organisms that feed this way are called filter feeders. Examples of filter feeding fish in Texas are gizzard shad and paddlefish. These species of fish spend most of their time in the open water where they can feed on plankton. In the open water of a pond or a lake, it may seem that plankton have no defense to escape these filter feeders except by luck. Most zooplankton and some forms of phytoplankton do have ways to move about. Despite being so tiny, many species can move very quickly. They also may hide among the plants growing underwater. But considering how fast and far even a small fish can move in comparison, plankton make pretty easy prey for much of the aquatic life in lakes and ponds. Now that's good for many of the fish species we know best. These are top aquatic predators in lakes and ponds, and these are the fish we like to catch when we go fishing. Many species of fish get very large, but all fish depend in some way on the many tiny species at the bottom of the aquatic food chain. Species such as gizzard shad are grazers or filter feeders on this plankton. Gizzard shad become prey for larger predator fish, such as largemouth bass and striped bass. Some fish, such as some catfish species, are scavengers and eat whatever they can find. Let's talk about aquatic plants. It's like a band of life around lakes and ponds. Like plants on land, aquatic plants spread out in beds or in clumps and they attract a variety of animal life. Some plants live entirely underwater. These are called submergent plants. While other plants have some of their parts sticking out of the water. These are called emergent plants. To survive, all plants need water, carbon dioxide, sunlight, and nutrients such as phosphorus and nitrogen. Water plants have special adaptations that help them live in their underwater environment. Waxy or slimy coatings protect them from drying out when water levels drop. Porous stems or leaves let them absorb minerals right from the water. Some have leaves that float on the surface, while others, the entire plant floats on the surface. Sunlight can only penetrate so deeply into the water of a lake. Where sunlight reaches the bottom, rooted plants can grow. This is called the littoral zone and is often the area of the lake from the shoreline outward to the point sunlight no longer reaches bottom. This is like a narrow band or strip reaching out from the water from the shoreline and islands. These bands of plants hold the greatest variety of life biodiversity to be found in the lake ecosystem. 
provides important habitat for many species of fish, too. While aquatic plants can become a nuisance if they overgrow their habitat, they do play an important role in aquatic ecosystems and help maintain or improve water quality. Nearest the shore, this area may look more like a wetland than a lake. It's a transition area between the dry uplands and the permanently deep areas of the lake or pond. Mud along the shoreline often contains tracks of all kinds of animals. If you look carefully, you can find the tracks too. The littoral zones plant beds serve to shelter prey organisms from predators and are a food source for aquatic insects. In North America, around 8,000 species of insects spend some or all of their lives in the water. Some of these insects feed directly on plants, while others feed on life found on the plants. There are three main ways that insects feed among a pond's plant life. The first, scraper grazers, have special mouth parts that they can use to remove algae growing on the surface of plants and solid objects. The mouth parts act sort of like sharp scraper blades. The second, collectors, gather small bits of loose and decaying materials by using mouth parts or by brushing up the little bits using fine hairs on their head or their legs. And the last are called shredders. They use mouth parts designed to nibble off and then grind up pieces of live plants in the water or plant materials that fall into the water from plants growing along the water's edge. Omnivorous insects eat both plant and animal materials. Predator insects catch and feed on live animals such as other invertebrates. In fact, some aquatic insects are fast enough and large enough to catch and feed on small fish and tadpoles. Now, it's not just the insects that are the predators here. Fish and insect-eating land animals, and in particular birds, seek out the insects in the littoral zone. They help complete the complex food web of predators and prey supported by aquatic plant growth in Texas lakes and ponds.